I'm Peggy Peck, MedPage Today, at the American Society of Clinical Oncology meeting in Chicago. Glioblastoma has been in the headlines lately, and there's new research here at this meeting on treatment for glioblastoma. I'm talking now with Dr. Len Lichtenfeld from the American Cancer Society about the use of bevacizumab for treatment of glioblastoma. Uh, Dr. Lichtenfeld, uh, in recent weeks, there's been a great deal of attention to a, a cancer that's, uh, that's affected one of our nation's leaders, glioblastoma. Um, I know you don't want to address the Kennedy situation, but, t but talk a little bit about this cancer and how difficult the treatment is with it. Well, I, as you mentioned, I can't talk specifically about Senator Kennedy, but clearly it is a difficult cancer. It's an uncommon cancer. Uh, it is becoming more frequent in older Americans. And the reason it's so difficult to treat is because it doesn't present with signs or symptoms until late in the course. And in addition, frequently, the cancer infiltrates the brain tissue. So you can't, not uncommonly, you can't go in and do surgery. You want to do surgery if you can, but surgery remains the primary therapy. More recently, we've had newer radiation therapy techniques, we've had newer drugs, and here at this meeting, there are several reports about the use of bevacizumab or Avastin, and that drug being successful in helping people with glioblastoma. So let's talk a little bit about that. Um, uh, bevacizumab, a, a drug that's, uh, that's had a, a great success, if you will, as an add-on therapy in many, in many solid tumors, um, uh, but it does have a high toxicity. Um, now, as my understanding that in these in the cancers in the uh, brain cancer studies, they've not seen as much toxicity. Um, so I'm wondering if you just comment. On They're not reporting excessive toxicities, and some of these toxicities are more or less specific, interestingly enough, to the cancers. For example, in colorectal cancer, they see GI bleeding. In lung cancer, they found that some of the patients with squamous cell cancer actually had you know, bleeding from the lungs. So uh, they haven't seen, let's say, bleeding in the brain as a side effect of, of Avastin when it's used in that situation. It's been generally acceptable, but we also have to remember when we talk about glioblastoma, we're talking about a fatal disease. Uh, people don't survive glioblastoma, unfortunately. And with drugs like Avastin or Bevacizumab, we're beginning to see actually some long-term survivors. And we don't know, you know, it's still very early, but there are reports here at this meeting of long-term survivorship in some of the patients that have received that drug in combination with some of the other drugs that are used to treat, the, to treat glioblastoma. But when you talk about long-term survival, you're really talking just a little over nine months. You're not talking years. It's, not, it's measured in months, not years. Well, some of these patients are actually approaching two years, a couple of patients. Now, they may be exceptions. We know in cancer treatment, we always talk about median survival. Median means 50% don't live that long and 50% live longer. So they're always, in, in, as with many cancer trials, there's always that intriguing, uh, shall we say, tale of survivorship that always gives us the hope there may be something better on the horizon. So, do, but, but you think that there is real promise with bevacizumab in terms of glioblastoma? Absolutely. I mean, we don't have much to offer patients with that disease. Uh, we have a drug called temozolomide that's been used with radiation therapy. It was reported here a couple of years ago and now has become standard of care. But there's not much else. Arena Tcan uh, 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 and, and Vespid have been used. So, you know, but Avastin adds another drug. I mean, this is a tough area to treat. And it's tough to treat with chemotherapy because of what we call the blood-brain barrier that is getting the drugs from the circulation actually into the brain, into the brain tumor. That's been the problem with these cancers ever since I first started my research career back in the 1970s. And some of those drugs are still being used because it's hard to get the drug to the disease. Avastin seems to be able to do that. And so that's why we're so hopeful that not only Avastin but other drugs, as we learn more about glioblastoma, as we learn what makes a glioblastoma, the cancer cell, a cancer cell, even Dr. Niederhuber from the NCI talked today about glioblastoma opening up the secrets of its genetics in a way that we may understand. We've learned new things about the genetics of this cancer. Hopefully, we'll be able to exploit that going forward for even better treatments. Thank you very much, Dr. Lichtenfeld. Thank you. So to sum up, glioblastoma, a difficult cancer, one that's on the increase, but perhaps there are therapies that, that will be effective for this cancer. At the American Society of Clinical Oncology in Chicago, I'm Peggy Peck, MedPage Today.